Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today's question is If 36% of the population is heterozygous for a certain gene, what percentage of the population will show the recessive phenotype in the next generation? And here is a variance of the answers. And uh, if you think that we cannot solve this information because we need more information to determine uh, the correct answer, Actually, there are two ways to answer this question. First of all, uh, we have to choose, of course, uh, answer E. Need more information to determine, but only because uh, we don't know that uh, this uh, population are in Hardin-Weinberg equilibrium or not. Nothing is said that this population is in hardy weinberg equilibrium. But if we would know this information, then we can solve this problem and take a look, for example, at this picture. So let me explain what uh, this picture uh, shows here. And first, uh, let's take a look. For example, this green line represents heterozygous genotype. This orange or yellow represent a homozygous recessive uh, genotype and uh, this blue line represent homozygous dominant genotype. So let me also use this uh, same colors. So uh, according to the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, our formula should equal uh, to uh, so uh, P squared plus 2 pq so plus 2 pq plus uh, plus q squared and this is going to be frequency of three uh, genotypes in a population when we have two alleles allele p and allele q. So p plus q would equal to 100% if we have only two alleles in a population. And maybe for you it would be easier instead of p and q um, to use, for example, uh, dominant allele a and recessive allele A. Then P squared would equal to uh, genotype AA, homozygous dominant, to PQ would equal to genotype that is heterozygous, capital A and small a, and Q squared would equal to genotype homozygous recessive. And now uh, some of you would think why we have two here. For example, why not just uh, uh, two alleles that can make three genotypes? Homozygous dominant plus heterozygous genotype plus uh, homozygous recessive genotype. And take a look. If we have in our gene pool only two alleles, dominant allele A, and recessive allele A. So what uh, combinations these two alleles may produce? And in a gene pool, we may have following genotypes. And so capital A, capital A here, capital A, small a here, capital A, small a here, and small a, small a here. So uh, basically, this means that, uh, for example, this equals to A squared, or in our formula it is Q squared. And, for example, this genotype equals to A squared, homozygous dominant, and also you see that a heterozygous genotype would be here 
in this uh, Punnett square represented twice. So we represent it as two capital A small a. So that's why we have here two. So now we can return to this picture. So uh, let's start at this point. What we see. Uh, so uh, again, these three lines represent three genotypes. And these numbers here represent frequencies of the dominant allele. So P uh, or dominant allele A and this line Q or recessive allele A. So at this point we see that frequency of the dominant allele A is zero, but frequency of the recessive allele A equals one or 100%. So now let's take a look what uh, genotypes we would see here. Of course, if in our gene pool we have only allele, recessive allele A, that means that 100% uh, of the genotypes would be uh, small a, small a, or homozygous recessive, because recessive allele is only one allele present in, in a gene pool. Let's take, for example, this point here. So this was our first reference point. Now let's talk about what we see here. And what we see here, that each allele, dominant allele and recessive allele in a gene pool have frequency of 0.5 or 50% each. And that means that in this point, so let me draw a line here. This means that uh, frequency of the heterozygous genotype is going to be 50%. So, um, and uh, frequency of the uh, homozygous dominant genotype is going to be about 25%. And frequency of the homozygous recessive genotype also going to be about 25%. Again, how we got these numbers, how we can get these numbers without this graph. Frequency of the dominant allele 0 0.5, let's put it here. So 0 0.5 multiplied by 0 0.5 would be 0 0.25 or 25%. And this is exactly what we see here at this point and frequency of the uh, homozygous recessive uh, genotype and phenotype would be also as you see 0 0.5 multiplied by itself so would be 0 0.25 and this is going to be frequency of the recessive genotype and frequency of the heterozygous genotype, we also can calculate uh, according to this part of the formula, 0 0.5 multiplied by 0 0.5. So we are going to get 0 0.25 and multiplied by two. And we are going to get 50% would be frequency of this genotype. So as you see, just looking at this graph, and just knowing that frequency of the heterozygous genotype is 36%, for example, we can put a dot uh, somewhere here, which represents 36%. We can predict that, for example, frequency uh, at this point of the dominant allele would be somewhere 22 and frequency of the recessive allele would be 0 0.78. So uh, again, as you see, even if we would use this table in order to solve this problem, none of the answers are correct. And uh, again, we cannot use this picture, this uh, because uh, nothing is said that this uh, population is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. 
and this uh, table we can use only uh, when we know that uh, population is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium then uh, just knowing for example uh, percent of the heterozygous genotype or knowing percent of the homozygous genotype or homozygous uh, recessive or homozygous dominant we can find uh, also frequency of the other genotypes we also can find frequency of the alleles in this population so if we would have uh, in a description that this is uh, hardy weinberg population then we can give an answer but today uh, we cannot give an answer uh, actually we can give that this is answer e we need more information to determine and uh, now you know how to use uh, this graph in order to find uh, different frequencies of uh, alleles in a population and frequencies of the genotypes and phenotypes because uh, you know that uh, homozygous recessive genotype equals to uh, also phenotype which is going to be recessive phenotype and these two genotypes would make a dominant phenotype so in simple Mendelian genetics homozygous dominant genotype uh, and heterozygous genotype phenotypically would look the same as dominant phenotype and this genotype would look differently would look like recessive phenotype one more important note before i finish this video so we have to put one here when we add all three genotypes made by two alleles in a population of course we should get one or 100 percent because one here equals to 100 percent and if we for example take any uh, any point here and we want to find frequency of other genotypes again for example let's return to this example uh, we have found that frequency of the heterozygous genotype is 50 percent frequency of both homozygous dominant and heter uh, homozygous recessive genotype here is 25 percent so 50 plus 25 plus 25 equals to 100 or to 1 so uh, whatever uh, point we will take we should get at this point uh, different frequencies of uh, genotypes but when we add them we always should get one and for example at the same point you see uh, we have frequency of the dominant allele and recessive allele and if we combine frequency of these two alleles we also get one take a look 0 0.2 plus 0 0.8 would equal to 1 so basically when we add frequencies we should get 1 or 100 percent when we add genotypes we also should get 1 or 100 uh, percent so we do all our calculations on the scale between 0 and 1 and on this scale 1 equals to 100 percent just like here i can put 1 here or i can put 100 percent and uh, of course when we do calculations on the scale between 0 and 1 our answer also would be always between 0 and 1 and if we need to give an answer in percentage form we just have to multiply our answer by 100 and this is how we uh, can get our answer in percentage form for those people who are still confused let me show you uh, again calculations for example for this point and we see that at this point uh, we see homozygous dominant genotype is almost uh, 0 0.8 frequency 
or almost 80 percent and frequency of the dominant allele at this point would be 0 0.9 so how we get this number basically that means that uh, homozygous dominant genotype would equal to 0 0.9 multiplied by 0 0.9 and we are going to get 0 0.81 and this is exactly what we see here so frequency of this genotype is 0 0.81 when frequency of the dominant allele is 0 0.9 and frequency for example of the uh, other genotypes would be so another point here and another point here so uh, frequency for example of the homozygous recessive genotype at this point would be as you see 0 0.1 0 0.1 multiplied by 0 0.1 so would be 0 0.01 or one percent one percent and eighty one percent here and frequency of the heterozygous genotype would be two multiplied by frequency of the dominant allele zero point nine and multiplied by frequency of the recessive allele which is 0 0.1 so 2 multiplied by 0 0.9 going to be 1.8 and multiplied by 0 0.1 would be uh, 0 0.18 if we need an answer in percentage form as you remember we have to multiply by 100 and the answer would be 18% and uh, as you see now let me use different color uh, we have 81 percent plus 18 percent would give us 99 percent and plus one percent we are going to get 100 percent when we add frequency of all three genotypes so uh, I hope now you understand how to use this graph in order to solve analogous problems where frequency of only one genotype is given. You can say uh, frequency of other genotypes and also frequency of the alleles in a gene pool, but only if you know that uh, this uh, population is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. And this is all for today. Thank you for attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. See you in the next video. Goodbye.